What's going on, my brothers and sisters? So we are going to go there tonight. Why is it that within the church, there are people that will not rock with or associate with people that God is rocking with? There are people that God is clearly uh, approving of them. He's clearly moving in their life. He's clearly using them. But church folks will ignore that and look at that individual and say, I can't rock with them. Why is it that people in the church who are supposed to be a reflection of Christ will not forgive people that God has forgiven? And I feel this is a topic that we really need to address because one, it's going to encourage you. If you're anything like Brother Marcus, when you look over your shoulder, your past ain't that pretty. It's not squeaky clean, all right? Uh, God forgave me for a lot. God had to clean me up. He brought me a mighty long way. Some of my mistakes were due to ignorance. Some of my mistakes were due to lust. Some of my mistakes, I, you know, I just didn't know any better. But check this out. What does the Bible say? Psalms 103 and 12. So let's say this is Brother Marcus' sin right here, right? Psalms 103.12 says, as far as the east is from the west, uh, he has removed our transgressions from us. Do you know how far the east is from the west? So, so check that out for a second. He said, I, I took your sin, I took your transgression, and I removed it as far as the east is from the west. Acts 22.16 says, and now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So no matter what sin Brother Marcus has on this board, no matter what sin I've got in my past, no matter what I've done, no matter how bad it sounds, it doesn't matter if the whole board is full and you just look and everywhere you look, it's just sin, 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 mistake, failure, mess up, got it wrong, made the wrong decision. He says that when I get baptized, my sins are washed away. He says, I remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. So why is it that when we see an individual that God has washed away their sins and he's forgiven them, we keep trying to mark them for who they used to be. You say, I don't care that God forgave you. I don't care that God washed away. I don't care that God gave you a fresh start. I keep trying to mark you with your sin. I keep trying to call you by your past. I keep trying to call you by your shame. Why is it that people do that in the church? Because if God literally gave me, look at this, a clean, fresh start, there's no mark. There's no, there's no stain of my sin at all. It's brand new. It's clean. And so when I come to the church, this is what you should see. This is what, how you should treat me. Treat me in love. So why is it? You know what? I'm going to show you. Let's just go there. Let's be all the way real. Why is it that if God forgives people and he gives them a second chance, right? And they make mistakes and things like that. This is all you see. And I know it's backwards for you guys, but this is all you see, right? You don't see that this person is gifted. You don't see that uh, God is using this person. You don't see that God is with this people. All you see is their past. All you see is their sin. All you see is that maybe they have a couple of kids, but no husband or vice versa. All you see is this. But God doesn't see this. And we're supposed to be a reflection of Christ. Now watch this, because these super religious folks, they act so, you know, holier than thou, and they're just so in touch with God. But Romans 8 says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So if someone has the spirit of God and they have fellowship with God and God is speaking to them and God is using them, but all you can see is their past. Maybe something is off with your spirit because it says your spirit is supposed to bear witness. And so what you're rejecting, God has approved because who you don't want to hang with, who you don't want to associate with, who you don't want to use, God is with them. And that's the thing that blows my mind. And I'm not just talking about Brother Marcus tonight, even though I have experienced this. Because guess what the Bible says? It says in Matthew 7, 16 through 20, ye shall know them by their what? Their fruits. Not their past. 
not their mistakes, not their failures, not their sin. It says, know them by their fruits. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And then it says, wherefore by their fruits, ye shall know them. Why is it that people ignore all of the fruit to just focus on what the person used to be? If we did that with the Bible characters, right? Paul did all of this great stuff. He wrote most of the New Testament. But if Paul was living today, right, and he was an evangelist and churches were inviting him, some people, the only thing that they would focus on about Paul was, you used to be a murderer. And so every time they see Paul, they say, you're a murderer. I don't care that you preach. I don't care that God is using you. I don't care that uh, uh, you're writing these awesome letters that have went for generations now and bless people. I don't care about none of that because in my eyes, all I see is a murderer. All I see is that you're divorced. All I see is that you used to be a gangbanger. All I used to see is, is the way that you used to live or even this. We look at individuals and God is with them, but because they don't dress a certain way or I can't rock with you because they don't look in a way that you approve of, right? Um, you don't want to fellowship with them. Or if you're in a position of power, you don't want to use them. And that's mind boggling to me. If God is using the person and God is flowing through the person and God has filled them with the spirit, who are you to disapprove? Who are you? If God is spending time with the person in fellowship with the person, speaking to the person, sending the person out, who do you think you are to try to disapprove of them? Look at the evidence that, yo, God is with them. So who do I think I am? And, and you know what? This might sound like such a simple thing, but there's so many people in Christianity who do it. They ignore all of the evidence that God is with a person, and they just look at what they don't like or what they heard or what they heard in gossip. That's not being led by the Spirit of God. So I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters. I'm not going to make this video long. I'm going to end it. This is you. When you come to Christ, no matter what used to be on here, no matter how marked up it was, every inch of this could be covered in sin and shame and mistakes and failures, right? But guess what? When he washes it away, there's not one amount of green on here anymore because you have what? He whom the sun set free is free indeed. I am free to be everything that God has called me to be. I'm free to have every blessing that God wants me to have. I'm free to move into everything that God has for me because he set me free. No matter what people say, people can try to mark you. People can try to shame you. People can try to point out what you used to do, but this is who I am now and I am free. He has liberated me. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. You can try to condemn me for what I used to do. He's washed it away. I'm brand new. I'm clean. Don't let anybody put you in a prison cell because all they see is your past. All they see is, is maybe your outward appearance or things that they just dis... Don't let anybody do that. If God has set you free and he's forgiven you, walk in that freedom, walk in that liberty. You are free to be... Somebody really needs to hear this tonight. You are free to be everything that God has called you to be. You are free to enjoy the blessings that God has for you because he doesn't hold it against you. I don't know... How many times I need to say this in the video, but it's like some people in church just can't seem to get that. It's gone. I don't care if they walk in your church and you Google them or you find out about their past. It's gone. So treat them accordingly. And then don't sit on them because God can use them in a mighty way. And he did that all throughout the Bible. All right. Hey, I love you guys. I'm going to keep this one short tonight. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus name. We're going to California this weekend. Uh, you can check the flyer on the Instagram, Marcus Rogers, Child of the King, Facebook. It's on the uh, wall and all of that. You guys have a good evening.